you know, consume all the battery power, all the you know uh, processor speed that is available. Then every other app will have trouble, difficulty, isn't it? So the mechanism of killing your app is also built into Android or iOS for that matter. So if your app is not optimized enough to work in that constrained environment, say it is it's by mistake in the program you have written an infinite loop. It's kind of running forever and it's eating up the memory. Every time it's doing an allocation, whatever. You guys are doing some C, C++? Yeah. Or yeah. you are internally aware of program, right? You are doing a 0 or something. Sorry. Yeah. So what happens when you, you know, declare a variable, you kind of start working with the variable, it's invariably storing that is stored somewhere in the memory, right? And that is being used. So the more you want you store, that means you are consuming. It's just like you are filling up your room with, with some items, isn't it? So memory is also like that. You have some 2GB, 4GB, something. And you, you keep adding to it your stuff, that means that, that is depleting. The 4GB is running down, isn't it? So that's why your mobile application has to be you know, optimized for better performance but within that constraint, memory and bandwidth power and things. Okay? So, in general, we don't need to do much of uh, work to do that because our layer is internal talking to the frameworks, which is internal talking to the hardware, battery, processor, or hardware. So, this is the layer where Android or iPhone will take care of that part. All that we need to do is we have to, when we are using these frameworks inside our application, we have to just follow the best practices, whatever they have mentioned. If they say, do it this way, we stick to that whatever pro protocol they have mentioned, and that will be done. Okay? So that's about this time. So, Coming to the different types of uh, features available inside the Android phone, I'm sure since most of you are using Android phones, you can uh, make at least few of these things uh, you know, directly related with, like notifications. You know, in the top, you will have, uh, you know, if you have this it will show some icon in the top so that you will. The moment when you come back to your phone, you understand how somebody called you. So it's a notification, isn't it? So, like that. So activities are every screen that you see. Or maybe there's a really screen. Every, for the time being, we can put it as every application is an activity. Of course, one application can have multiple activities inside it. But at least for the time being, you can compare it with each application is an activity. Activity is the screen, the folder, the window, inside which if it is a phone, you are seeing a mnemonic keypad. Isn't it? If it is an email application, you are seeing a quality keypad. Depending upon which kind of application you are using, it is coming up with that kind of you know user interaction item, isn't it? So each one is an activity. Then something called intent, view, content provider, service, which we will see the next slides. What it tries to do is to introduce Android to you. That is the basic idea of this slide. So if you are starting with Android, stack is what we have seen. So if you want to get into more of system side programming, you want to write your own Android OS and you want to enhance the OS capabilities, what Google has done is fine, but I want to add some more to that, fine, you have to work on stack. Right? But if you are happy with what Google has put for you already, you just wanted to make applications using that, you know, stack layers, then this is what you will be working with. Okay? So this manifest file is kind of an organizer for all of these things put together as one installer. Just like EAC in Windows, DMG in Mac, my Mac, it is APK here. Okay? APK is a file. For each application. Okay. Even when in your 
downloading map into your uh, smartphone also, Google Play is actually sending you an APK. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't need to really, you know, focus too much of what these clients are saying because this is what is written here in the books. Okay, so don't worry about, you know, by parties or letting something here. Just try to make your understanding clear about, okay, when I'm saying Android uh, developer, I'm going to myself write an Android application. And, uh, when you are, as I said, see, trying to see inside this glass what is happening. What, when I touch the menu button, how it is going back and giving me the same application. So, you just need to know what each one is called and what all exists there so that you will have an idea of okay, this is what I need to learn. And then you can start learning. Okay? So, you, you can just keep it to that point at this point of time. Otherwise, I think you will be able to worry. Uh, learning is too short time. Okay. So, as I said, activity is one single application. Say, like you are in Twitter, you are posting a tweet. So, you are dealing with an activity. Okay. Each activity is given a window in which to draw its user interface. So, Twitter will have, Twitter company has made its own Android application. You installed it, your phone is running Twitter application. When you open the Twitter, it will uh, ask your credentials to give your credentials you are inside now. So now Twitter is running on your Android. From the user point of view, okay, I am now working on Twitter. In the developer point of view, Twitter activity is running. Okay, that's interesting. So now there is an activity that is running inside your Android phone, and that that is this. Okay, so activity is from. Maybe you can compare it with your uh, PC. You opened Word. You opened uh, how to get this or how to get something in your PC. You are mailing them. You are mailing for your postman or whatever. So when you are in Word and doing some editing, you are now working in, isn't it? Windows Word application. Right? When you are in email or open a browser, instead of which you have your Gmail account, you open your mailing. You are now in. Yeah, your browser. Browser is an application. It's the same thing. So, each application is in developer point of view one activity. So, when, when you are building your app, you will start with an activity. First, you will have an activity which is blank. So, when I tap your application, it will come the blank screen. Black, blank screen, nothing will come inside. Okay? But you still you write in the very app. It's an application that is running, isn't it? So now we will add on top of it, which like you will add a new. You want your application to be, uh, you know, look a little uh, you know, uh, Indian. You will make your application have saffron on the top, white in the middle, and green at the bottom, maybe. isn't it? So that's a view. Now view is a layer that is coming on the activity. So activity is a container. You see the number. Activity is a container which carries your view and other things like your internet and other things. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all Android users can quickly, you know, see that this is how it's happening in your phone. So what's happening on the phone screen or wherever, in the menu screen, you have taken an Android icon. You choose an Android icon. For example, we have taken phone here. So what we are trying to say here is intent. So when you have tapped the icon, phone application has is kind of got that information from you from the UI that it has to get activated. So it's opening up the phone's phone application. And in fact it's processing the data to make sure that your Car is going traveling in the direction. Okay. So the user information, user interactivity is getting translated into intent and it is getting processed inside the application. Okay.
So, so as I said, 